Hi, welcome to another episode of Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Brad Weening. And I'm Dr. Paul Zalzal. Welcome. We've got a lot of new viewers lately. Well, yeah, some interest in the channel. Yeah, so thanks. If you're new, we are called Talking with Docs. Yeah. And what we do is we, 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 we talk with Docs. It's in the title. It's in the title. And thanks to all our old viewers. We have all a right. lot of very, very loyal subscribers that have followed us for the last five and a half years. Awesome comments. The comments that really help one another. To drive the channel. I'd say we appreciate it. Thanks. Keep leaving comments. Yes. What are we talking about today, Paul? Today we're talking about a supplement. Okay. We've talked about supplements before. Yep. The difference is often when we talk about supplements, we hit the literature hard and we're like, okay, there's not a ton of evidence to support this. But today, today we're talking about vitamin D. Vitamin D's got some evidence. And for me, it's one of probably the two that I think you probably for sure should take. That's vitamin D and B12. You know what? I, I always wonder, like, how do they name these vitamins? Like, the guy sitting in the front row when they discovered vitamin D, he's like, okay. What should we call it? What should, we got A, we got B, we got C. I got, let's call it vitamin D. Yeah, well, what about the next one? Let's call it vitamin E. Okay. The guy sitting next to him, I got an idea for the next one. Yeah. Vitamin F. Class clown. Sorry. That's stupid. Why would you say F? Nobody's going to take a pill called vitamin F. <laughs> so, interesting, a little about the history of vitamins. So, there's a guy named, wait for it, Dr. Funk. Casimir Funk. Make sure you pronounce that N. Never in the history of names is there more important a letter than the N in that name. So this guy, Dr. Funk, in 1912, believed that vitamins required critical amines, a chemical structure in order to be functioning. So vital amines, they called them vitamins. And then within like a year, they realized that the amine part was not necessary, so they dropped that, shortened it to vitamins. Except for the French, I think still, they still say Do they? vitamin, vitamin. Vitamin, I think vitamin, vitamin. maybe. Right. right, so we got to the A, the B, the C, the D. We we're talking about that and even vitamin E. And then, so the A's were the fat soluble, the B were the water soluble, and then they agreed to name them by letter as they discovered them. But then they got to F, and actually they named vitamin F, but it turned out to be omega-3 and six fatty acids. And then they discovered G, and G was actually vitamin B2, riboflavin, so they actually made a bunch of mistakes. And so they reclassified them, but they did get to vitamin K, and K is called vitamin K because the German word coagulation, um, and vitamin K is involved in the coagulation pathway, and so they kept that one, vitamin K, and the rest is- And we use vitamin K clinically. If yes. someone has come in, uh, on a blood thinner known as warfarin or coumadin. Coumadin, you've probably heard uh, of it. Probably heard of it. Then to reverse that, we give vitamin K. I remember residency giving a lot of vitamin K. A lot K. of vitamin Back K. In fact, coumadin was really common. Coumadin is not as commonly used now. No. Uh, so we don't use vitamin K as much, but definitely that was, uh, it had its role in therapeutics. Okay, so vitamin D, what does vitamin D do? Why, why does it matter? Okay, so, and we talked about this before in our previous video. Four years ago. Was it that long ago? 2007, five years, I think 2017. Wow. Okay, we talked about bone health. Yes. And that's still there, okay? Yeah. That still has good evidence to support the use of vitamin D in maintaining good bone health in the prevention of osteoporosis and the treatment of osteoporosis. We've got a video on osteoporosis. Right. Okay, so bone health is critical. Bone health, evidence, good scientific studies that show you should take vitamin D for bone health. So the second reason that you should take vitamin D is for immunity. There's um, some good evidence that shows that not necessarily hyper levels of vitamin D are gonna protect you, but that low levels put you at a higher risk, particularly Interestingly, because we did a video about MS a couple weeks right. ago, there was a study in 2018 that showed people that had MS had a higher chance of having a suboptimal vitamin D level. I thought you were gonna talk about another immunity issue that so, so what I would say is that it does also relate to other um, acute and chronic infections. And there's a recent viral infection that you may have heard about. Don't say it. COVID-19. We haven't talked about COVID in a lot of videos. And Thank goodness, no of, mask. In fact, I'm gonna petition the CDC to name the next variant Lord Voldemort. So, so that we don't talk. So about the it. nerds like me who know <laughs> Harry Potter will say we don't talk about it. Yes, it has a role in um, the severity of the flu and COVID-19. It probably does not prevent you from getting it, um, but it often has been shown to reduce the severity. So people that are sick in the ICU have been shown to have a higher chance of lower vitamin D and getting back to normal has a higher chance of helping fight the infection. Okay, and then supplements, evidence for supplements. Is it as good as for bone health, the scientific evidence to use vitamin yes. D for immunity? No, not for me. The evidence yeah. is not as good as for bone health, but you're taking it for bone health anyway, so you're gonna yeah. get the bonus. There you go. Yeah. It doesn't matter why you take it. Sure, how much do you take? 
That's a good question. It, there's a variation in dosages. I personally take 2,000 international units. That's yeah. how vitamin D is measured, international units. Yeah. Um, but the range, I think, is about 600 to 2,000. Yeah, and if you take more. Yeah, if you read some, you'll talk about four and 5,000 and 10,000. There's not any good supporting evidence to take the mega doses, and that yeah. is being researched right now, particularly in light of COVID-19. Yeah, Sorry. now, of course, if you have a deficiency and yes. you prescribe for a deficiency, the dose may be different. And really, you always want to talk to your healthcare provider, uh, before you start taking a supplement, so check this out before. And, and the other important thing about vitamin D is yeah. it's it's a fat soluble vitamin. A, D, E, and K yes. are fat soluble. So what does that mean? It's fat soluble. It means that if you take a whole bunch of it, it can be stored in your fat. You can actually have vitamin D toxicity. Right. Unlike. Uh, water soluble vitamins like your vitamin C, for example, vitamin B, yep. those things you just pee out, right? Expensive you, urine. Well, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully it does something in this way. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, so immunity. Number three, heart disease. Yeah, so good evidence to show the same group of people, the people with low vitamin D, higher chance of heart attack, stroke, even diabetes and high cholesterol. Like these things are all related to low vitamin D. So again, we got to get you to a normal level. Super levels do not protect you, but that may be a, a reason to consider testing if you do have other medical conditions. Your family doctor probably has to keep that on the radar. Right. So, so there is science. There, this is subtle here. There is scientific yes. evidence that says if you're deficient in vitamin D, you're at increased risk of heart disease right. and diabetes and things like that. However, there's not a ton of good evidence to say that if you take a supplement and you're not deficient that you're going to reduce the risk of those things but so there is an association established but we just can't tell you if the supplements are going to prevent that stuff and some of the researchers were wondering oh maybe it's because these people just have make bad life choices and they have high blood pressure and heart disease because they don't exercise and they eat bad food and they don't go outside and all sorts of other things so it's hard to essentially tease them out but low vitamin d was related right. so there's some bias in those studies a little bit yes. okay next what else we got we got mood and depression yeah which unfortunately in 2022 is a really big problem unfortunately. yeah yeah definitely it's by you know followed of the lockdown there's been a lot more depression anxiety yeah. uh, so there's an association with uh, vitamin d and uh, mood and depression and anxiety and you wonder if that's all related to seasonal defective disorder or sad I, yeah I said what defective seasonal defective no not sgd that wouldn't be sad that'd be sad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, seasonal affective yeah. disorder where people don't go outside, they don't get natural light, it yeah. makes them sad and depressed, reduces their mood. And that relates to vitamin D. How? Why does the sun well, even matter to vitamin it, D? Right? That's the thing. Vitamin D, in our bodies, we can make vitamin D with exposure to sunlight, right? right. In our skin. Um, problem is, if you're in northern latitude, yeah. thanks to the Earth's tilt, you don't get as direct sunlight as much as you do say if you're at the equator right uh right and you have a shorter day as well yeah uh, so you're not getting enough vitamin d uh, from the sun yeah and plus you're wearing clothes you're not outside very much people with darker skin skin tones are protected against skin cancer but they're at a risk of lower vitamin d so yeah. a lot of factors there's going to be someone who watches the video who's going to take their clothes off and walk outside don't do that do not do that but vitamin D from the sunlight, especially up here in Canada, we don't get enough of the sunlight that we need to keep our vitamin D levels high enough. Okay, so we're talking a lot about people that have vitamin D deficiencies. What kind of symptoms are they gonna have any symptoms? Or are they gonna yeah. know? Yeah, so sim signs and symptoms of vitamin D deficiency, you can kind of guess from some of the indications that we just talked about for taking vitamin D, but you're gonna get like tired, achy muscles, yep. bone pain. Yep, um, you're gonna be fatigued and then worst case scenario, if your vitamin D goes really low, fracture easily. Yeah, you can have a bunch of spontaneous or low impact fractures. So that's a, a high a risk setting where you're making makes you wonder whether you should be tested or not for low vitamin D. And as orthopedic surgeons, we used to see that uh, fallout of vitamin D deficiency in a disorder called rickets. rickets right? We would uh, see rickets. It, you see it mostly in the developing countries where uh, breastfeeding was so prevalent yep. and the only means for feeding your baby, those babies were becoming vitamin D deficient and having some telltale signs in their developing bones of vitamin D deficiency. So like some bowing of the legs, um, growing bones were not growing the same as you would if you had an appropriate level of vitamin D. 
and of course, risk of fracture. There you go, a little history of vitamins, history of rickets, a lot, a lot of good information today. You, you better go play Trivial Pursuit right now. You're gonna win. You'll be ready. To Choose get... the green pie, science. <laughs> or no, I guess it'd be the health pie. I think science and nature, isn't it? I think yeah. that, I'm not sure if they've changed it. Yeah. Canadian invention, Trivial Pursuit, did you know really? that? Really? Yeah. No, I knew that actually. Yeah, two guys. <laughs> um, if you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel. And remember, you are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time. Thank you.